Hi everybody, thank you for joining us on uh, our video visitation. I guess it's been at least one Wednesday and maybe two since I've had the pleasure of joining you. And I wanted to get with you today, on, especially on account of Mary Coleman, our principal and I, we thought we'd come on over here and make some s'mores. And before we got started, well, we just might as well talk to the folks, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, you got the graham crackers. Got the graham crackers. And the marshmallows. Brought the marshmallows. Okay, good, good. I can't wait to get started. <laughs> but before we get to all that kind of culinary fun, let's talk about school a little bit. One thing that we have learned this summer in the process of interviewing assistant principal, principal candidates is that the anomalous year we experienced at Visitation School was hardly unique to us. Mm -hmm. Lots of places seem to have had most anomalous years and most difficult years. But we're trying to put all that behind us now and uh, get squared to uh, meet a, an academic term in more normative fashion. Mm -hmm. Would you care to comment on that? Sure. I think that uh, you've nailed it when you talk about how strange and different the year was. Um, and I think one of my goals is to try to put together as normal a school year as possible. Um, by that I mean having the students who would normally have lockers will have lockers. Having the students change rooms for classes. Um, and that means in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade they each have an individual schedule that they follow. 5th um, grade usually starts off traveling as a homeroom group and then at the end of the first quarter they switch to that more free changing. That just gives all of our students a much more normal school experience and, and we'd really like to be able to to return to that for them. Um, we, we also hope that we can bring back a number of our volunteers. Um, it's, it's probably best if they're vaccinated, um, but if they're not, they can certainly choose to wear a mask and, and come and help out. So volunteers in the cafeteria, volunteers to read with kids in the classrooms. We just hope that we can, our, our top goal is to try to be normal. Um, no one knows yet what's going to be recommended from the CDC or the health officials about masks and distancing, but um, right. our plan is to put all the kids back in the regular visitation school building except the normal kindergarten downstairs. So we won't be using tile hall for classes. We'll all be back in our normal classrooms in our normal building. That's our, that's our goal. Yes, and of course, between now and the end of August, I suppose all kinds of things could potentially happen, but we, we're trying to get everybody shoehorned back into the visitation school building. And the CDC social distancing guidelines for children presently are three feet? Three is that feet. Right? Mm -hmm. We think we can accommodate that in the school building. Mm -hmm. Great, we do. great. I hope so. You know, having Ty Hall. Um, being used for school purposes and necessarily being used for school purposes really uh, constrains uh, our, our pastoral efforts in, in, in other ways like golden shamrocks and, and other things that we, you know, funeral dinners and, and such. So mm -hmm. I sure hope we're able to, to not have to use Ty Hall again. But there's no guarantees. There's no guarantees. And I think everyone's waiting for the same thing. Our pod principals from St. Peter's, St. Elizabeth, and Thomas Moore were all on a text chain this morning wondering who's made decisions about, you know, what the protocols look like in the fall. Right. Um, we all put that on hold pending hearing from the CDC and the health departments, but that's not come out yet. Yeah, and among the many changes we're faced with this year is a new diocesan school superintendent mm -hmm. also, and so we of course have to toe the line in terms of diocesan recommendations. None have been made yet. None have been made yet. About COVID-related matters in the new school year. Um, but of course, if any are made, we'll have to live out of them too. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we've discovered in our assistant principal interviews and, and my own acquaintance with school people is that there's been um, quite a bit of turnover in um, school faculties. Uh, not merely ours, but uh, even some of our, our deanery schools, other diocesan schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, of course, unfortunately lost Linda Hughes as, as, as our assistant, assistant principal. principal. Right. She's going to step back into a part-time instructional coach role, mm -hmm. so thank God we didn't lose her altogether. Exactly. 
But we had to uh, hire a new assistant principal. I suspect that you know that. I hope you do. And um, Mary and, and the board you put together interviewed widely, and then I was privileged to interview the final three candidates. Mm -hmm. And we came up with a, with a lady who I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. I'm too. Um, she's come to us from Nativity Parish over on 119th Street in Kansas, Archdiocese. And uh, would, would, would you care to share anything about, about sure. her? I, I hope to have her in here for one of these things, <laughs> one of these days to talk, talk to us about her. But it, what would you care sure. to tell us? Um, I'll, I'll introduce Ke Kelly Minchel to you. Um, Kelly is a veteran teacher at Nativity, and because of her um, leadership master's degree, which she got 12 or 13 years ago, she took on, as part of that program, she took on some roles as an administrator and continued, once she did them and was doing them so well, the principals very wisely left her in those roles. So she ran their accreditation program and goal setting program with teachers. Um, she worked with teachers on their professional development planning and, and implementation. And she shepherded the, the school through the stream integration process, and, and STREAM would be the science, technology, religion, um, engineering, art, and math. Um, so in a Catholic school, STEAM went to STREAM. So she's highly knowledgeable in, um, in science, and that's one of the areas when she taught departmentalized groups, she taught science as well as um, English. So we've got a, a very experienced teacher. They did not have an assistant principal at that school because at the time the size was small enough, but she functioned in that role and, and she seemed the best fit for us with her gifts and her commitment to Catholic education through her whole teaching career. Yeah, I'm excited about her. Mm -hmm. um, I, I look forward to, uh, to, the, to the new school year and, and working with her. Now, in addition to the assistant principal, we've also had um, a number of other faculty changes and, and um, not only people leaving the faculty and coming to it, but even changing what they're doing mm -hmm. here. Can you talk about that some? Sure. Um, I, I am excited about the changes, um, not because we needed them, but because they're happening and the people we've put in place, I think, are really good. So. Um, for a quick rundown, Annie Panzino, who's a longtime early childhood educator, is moving to kindergarten. She taught fourth grade for half of the year this year. Um, Katie McSorley, who comes with elementary teaching experience, is moving from teaching a special class to teaching first grade. Um, we were able to, to hire Kim Carollo, who has been at presentation in early childhood for 20 years. Uh, but taught kindergarten at Viz in the early 90s and is glad to come back and, and be a first grade teacher for us. Um, Bridget Winget took a call from a, a gal who was looking to substitute teach and as she heard her story, she connected us and she's an amazingly gifted teacher with 20 years of experience coming to us from California and she'll be teaching in third grade. Um, Vargas, is that Vargas, her? Jen Vargas is her name. Yep. Um, in fifth and sixth and seventh, it's internal switches um, to move people to the right position, but also to teaching their strength. So we're excited about what we're doing with the, all those programs. None of those are new folks, but we've done some switching around because of their interest and their wish for growth as well as our own needs. Um, and then we'll have um, a new religion teacher with eighth grade. So uh, we're in the process of working on that. So we're, we're coming close. Um, I'm really excited to say that because uh, it's been a strong interest from a lot of parents, we have hired an enrichment teacher who will be working with students in those um, added challenge programs. Uh, she'll be there with us three days a week. And then we have contracted with the language project to bring in the Spanish program, um, and I'm excited about that. As a former Spanish teacher, I think this is top notch and will, will do us very well. Um, sorry to have, not have Senora Votner with us, but um, it's going to be the next best thing, similar in, in her approach to that. Mary, I know you've been so busy trying to keep all these balls in the air and fill in the blank spaces. 
And uh, th that may not even be the half of it. Mm -hmm. We, of course, uh, have uh, the, the EANS project, and you know, you might describe again to the folks what that is and, and bring us up to date on where, where we mm -hmm. are with that. Yeah, the EANS project is emergency assistance to non-public schools, so it's federal funds that have been uh, allocated to the states and then allocated to schools. Um, those funds are to help us, it's, it's strange with the timing, but to help us support pieces that we need in place if we should have any students who have to go virtual, um, so to have distance education. So we'll be able to upgrade our technology as in projectors and additional devices, um, especially cameras for teaching. But there are also funds in there that will help us pay some of last year's expenses that we were not able to already get covered through other federal funds. So we're excited about both of those things. And we're pursuing this, as I understand it, at the um, encouragement, if not insistence, of the diocese. Definitely the encouragement of the, the diocese. The, the state of Missouri is offering these funds to mm -hmm. non-public schools, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been allocated, and, and so we we hope to obtain a portion of them to, to help us out. Absolutely. Um, I noticed, uh, uh, finally, um, there are a good deal of service trucks parked around the school these days. Yeah. You know, in a school facility, there's always so much to do to, to maintain. And so um, we've got those projects underway. Can you, can you describe those and give us a progress report on, on sure. that? Sure, some of the summer work that's going on. Um, our maintenance crew is doing their normal, everything needs to be dusted, cleaned, and then carpets cleaned and floors waxed. So they're in, the, in a cycle with those programs right now. Today, Gates City was over, um, replacing some windows that had lost the, the argon in between the panes. So we needed some new window panes in the library. And I think going into the, the one wall of the cafeteria. Um, so it's a lot brighter and clearer there. So that was exciting. Um, U.S. Engineering has been around, um, changing out the filters and all of the air conditioning units, um, reboating them after the storms of last week, and keeping that going. We are waiting on, um, hopefully within the next two weeks, um, our delay carpet project. So this year is the third year of the carpet installation replacement in the whole building. So we are scheduled to have the top floor, all of that carpet replaced. So we're... Um, we were hoping it would happen in June. It hasn't happened yet, so we're making adjustments to get all the other work done and waiting for that to come. And that will complete the replacement of carpeting in the school, won't it? It will. This third year, will. everything will have been replaced. So I think things are kind of, you know, mm -hmm. look, looking better over there, mm -hmm. I think, in, in, in my estimation. They are. Maintenance is, um, it's a challenge that never ends. <laughs> it, it just never ends. Um, particularly when you have as many little people crawling through that building every day like we do. There's no crawling. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Running, running through the building. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Running, skipping, walking. Yeah. Um, however, I, I think we're going to probably be looking at another decline in enrollment this year, aren't we? It's a small one, but yes, there's just a small decline in enrollment. I think people are People are making tough decisions on coming back to normal and trying to decide where and when they want to be um, and wanting to know what's coming next. And I think that puts people on edge with making those important decisions. I think it's a temporary thing um, because there's a lot of good things coming. Um, I didn't really touch on it, but all of our new people in teaching kindergarten through second grade are getting their Orton-Gillingham training. All of the teachers that are in math education are getting their Eureka Math training. Um, our new folks are getting their project-based learning training. So we're keeping those standards and programs that are well-loved very high. Um, and, and this really is a COVID blip for us, I think, yes. um, over these last two years. So. Well, of course, I hope you're right. Um, mm -hmm. The number of baptisms in the parish remains very, very strong. Now, of course, not every child that's baptized here lives in the parish. Some of them are the uh, uh, grandchildren of, of, of longtime parishioners, but there are a lot of children within our territorial boundaries, and we would like to collect all of them, if we can, mm -hmm. into our school. We feel that we have a, a truly good program to offer, including some things that they cannot get anywhere else. 
to demonstrate that, I would uh, highly encourage any of you to come over here to an 8.15 a.m. Mass on a Wednesday during the school year. I think you'll see in vivid three-dimensional detail exactly what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Not perfect. No. But, but it's a beautiful thing. Well, uh, okay, Mary, I, I kind of drawn a blank. Is there anything else you wanted to comment on vis-a-vis -vis the school? I think we covered the, the, the highlights. Um, parents are going to get a follow-up email this week with putting some of these um, works in progress into writing. Right. So they can watch for that on their email. But and class lists are out. Class lists are out already. Mm -hmm. Okay. We continue to hire the last two positions and, and we're on the trail of some great candidates. So um, yep. that's what we know right now. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Well, um, you know, in the way of anything else that might be said around here, well, I'll just wait till another time. Uh, there's nothing very earth shattering going on right now. You know, it's summertime and I won't tell you the living is easy, but uh, it is, uh, oh, perhaps slightly less complicated than it typically is. So, Megan, is there anything you think we should mention? How are those new raised donuts working out? First time was good. We'll try them again in August. All right. They were a definite <laughs> step up, I'll tell you. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>